Hello again. This is Gary Entz, English professor at Saracoso Community College, and in this presentation I will help you to format a Works Cited page for an MLA style paper. This presentation is a follow-up to my MLA using Microsoft Word presentation, which leads you step-by-step -step through the general MLA formatting process. Much of what follows depends on you having already set up the first page and body of your paper correctly, so if you haven't followed the first lesson, I highly recommend doing so and creating an MLA style document before proceeding here. Also, I have created an MLA Works Cited Using MS Word handout to accompany this tutorial. You can find it in the Writing Resources section of our class website. If you are not in one of my classes at Saracoso, you will find a link to the document on the YouTube page of this presentation, along with other helpful resources. You are free to print it off and use it as needed. It is very important that you follow every single step of the instructions in order to avoid errors on your Works Cited page. So up and open up your already formatted MLA style document and follow along, pausing this presentation periodically to complete each step for yourself. Step 1. Close up extra spaces below your conclusion. Hidden spaces after your conclusion can cause problems later on. Before creating your Works Cited page, close up the extra spacing. First, scroll to the bottom of the text of your draft. Place your cursor directly after the last period of your concluding paragraph. It's alright if you don't have much of a draft yet. You can complete these steps even if you have only a line or two of text. Press and hold down the delete button of your keyboard until any extra spacing has been deleted. Now, check that any extra spacing is now gone by holding down the down arrow key of your keyboard. If extra spacing has been properly deleted, your cursor should remain where it is. Finally, hit the Enter Return button once to place your cursor on a new empty line directly below your conclusion. Step 2. Create a true page break. Remember that the title, Works Cited, needs to be at the top of its own page. If you simply use the Enter Return button to create a new page, there is the chance that your Works Cited page will get pulled up or down if you end up revising your essay further. To avoid this problem, use the Page Break feature of Word. Once you do, your Works Cited page will always be treated as its own page, even if you revise your essay further later on. To create a true page break, click the Insert tab. Under the Pages group, click the Page Break button. A new blank page should now be open, with your cursor blinking in the upper left of the page. You are now ready to create your works cited. Step 3. Center and print the page name. The page name, Works Cited, is to appear at the top center of the page. To begin, go to the Home tab.
under the Paragraph group of buttons, click the Center button. This should place your cursor in the center of the top line of the page. Now, type out the words Works Cited, making sure to capitalize the W and the C. Do not add bold, italics, underline, or quotation marks to this title. Do not add the word page to the end of it. Print it simply. Hit the Enter Return button of your keyboard to place your cursor on the next line. In the Home tab, under the Paragraph group of buttons, click the Align Text Left button. Or simply hit your Backspace button on your keyboard to place your cursor to the left of the new line. Step 4. Hanging indents. Step 4. Set hanging indents. A hanging indent is the reverse of a normally indented paragraph. For a regular paragraph, you indent the first line one half inch. However, in a hanging indent, the first line is flush with the left margin, and each subsequent line is indented one half inch. We'll see how this looks in a moment. For now, to set hanging indents, go to the Home tab, in the Paragraph section of Buttons, Click the Paragraph Dialog Box button. The Paragraph Dialog Box will open. Under Indentation, you will see a Special window. Select Hanging in this window. Make sure the By window is set to 0.5 inches. This is the length of the hanging indent. Click OK to activate and change and close. Your citations you are about to create will now be formatted with hanging indents. If for some reason you have created your citations before setting hanging indents, simply select all of your citation text and then run through this step 4 again. Step 5. Create your citations. Citations are carefully formatted paragraphs full of essential bibliographic information for each source you have referenced in your essay. You should create a citation paragraph for every source you have quoted, paraphrased, or summarized. Note that the Works Cited page is not a list of all the works you have consulted through the course of your research, only the works you have directly referenced. Let's format a sample citation together so you can get a feel for the process. Here is the raw bibliographic data of a source from an online database the college subscribes to. I collected this data by scanning the first and last pages of the source. We have here the essay title, the author, the original publication, the editor, the city of the publisher, the publisher itself, the year of publication, the database I found this source in, and the subscribing college, as well as the date of access. 
I also have the URL of the site here. This kind of specific info is good to keep track of during your research. This looks like a lot of technical information and may feel overwhelming, but a good handbook will help us to make sense of it all. Consulting my Pocket Wadsworth Handbook's directory of MLA Works Cited List Entries, I have found a model for citing a source found in a database. The model asks me to print the bibliographic information in a very specific way. Let's take a look at an image of the model in my handbook now. The model begins with the author's last name, followed by a comma, and his first name, followed by a period. We then have the title of the essay that's been quoted in quotation marks with a period within the last quotation mark. This is because it's a short work and short works get quotation marks around them. Next we have the title of the periodical, italicized since it's considered a long work. Next, the date of publication, the inclusive page numbers, the name of the database italicized since it also is considered a long work, the medium type, web here since it's an online source, and finally the date of access. Let's work with this model to format our own citation. Our source has some additional information to include so we may have to reference another model, combining models, to fit in the information. But let's jump in. Follow along with me. We begin with the name of the author, last name first, followed by a comma, and then the first name, followed by a period. Next is the title of the piece, in quotation marks, since it is considered a short work. A period should appear inside the last quotation mark. Following is the title of the publication in which the piece originally appeared, in italics, since it is considered a long work. Since we have an editor listed, and the model we are using doesn't list an editor, we'll need to consult another model in the handbook. I've found one called an essay in an anthology or edited collection, which tells us the editor is to appear after the title of the book. So let's add a period after the title, followed by ED for editor, and her name, first name first, followed by a period. Again, sometimes you will find it necessary to combine citation models, as we've done here, in order to include the essential information in a source. The second model we are using also lists the city and name of the publishing house after the editor, and since we have a city and publisher for this source, let's add these, the city with a colon after it, and then the publishing house, followed by a comma. The second model also adds the publication date here, followed by a period. For our source, we have a year only, making this simple. Now going back to our database source model, what comes next are page numbers, but our source lists no page numbers. Since it is an online source without set pagination, we can use the abbreviation NPAG, standing for no pagination, 
here, followed by a period. Next is the database name in italics, followed by a period. Now print the medium type, either print, web, film, email, DVD, CD, etc. Ours is a web resource, so list web with a capital W followed by a period. Lastly, the model asks for our date of access. Start with the day, follow it with a three-letter abbreviation of the month, and then the year, no commas and end the citation with a period. As you can see, this process is detailed, but it does get easier the more you do it. There are online citation generators that can help, but be careful with these as they frequently create formatting issues when copy-pasting citations from them into your paper. As the writer, you want complete control to guarantee the citations are done right, and the best way to ensure control is to find appropriate models in a handbook and then create the citations from scratch. Notice that the one half inch hanging indents are automatically created since we set to hanging indent earlier. I did not use the, the enter return button or the tab button of my keyboard at all as I created this citation, as using these buttons can create many problems with the citation. My lines go all the way across the page, and the automatic return feature of Word begins a new line as needed. Also notice that we did not list a URL for the website. MLA no longer requires the listing of URLs except in rare instances. This makes citations cleaner and easier to create. Now that you're finished with your first citation, you're ready to begin another. Remember that a works cited list is to appear in alphabetical order, so place your citation, your additional sources in the correct order according to the last name of the author. To start a new citation, Press the Enter Return button of your keyboard to begin a new line, either before or after the first citation, depending on the last name of the author. Gather the bibliographic information of your source, scanning the binding of the books, the title, the copyright pages, the top and bottom of online and database sources, etc. Find the correct model or models in the MLA documentation style section of your handbook or on a trusted site such as the Purdue Online Writing Lab. Finally, follow your models carefully. Here are two additional sample citations I have created for your consideration. The Kong Trul citation is for an essay found in an online version of a magazine. In my handbook, I located the corresponding article in an online magazine model, which made creating this citation easy. The title of the essay is in quotation marks, while the title of the publishing magazine 
is in italics. The medium here is web since it is an online source. The moment a citation is for an essay in an anthology book. For this citation I used the corresponding essay in an anthology or edited collection model in my handbook. Notice the medium type print. Also notice that the names of the editors within the citation appear first name first. Unlike the author, only if the first cited name of a citation appears last name first. Remember to make sure your citations are in proper alphabetical order There are a few final steps you should take to ensure your Works Cited page is ready to go. Step 6. Check spacing between paragraphs. Remember that all spaces in an MLA essay are to be double spaced, even between paragraphs. Sometimes, when you change paragraph style to hanging indent for your Works Cited page, the extra spacing between paragraphs default of Word activates. This can cause an unintended error in paragraph spacing, so double check your paragraph spacing now. Select your entire works cited page text from the beginning of the title to the end of the last citation. Hold down your left mouse button and drag. Go to the Home tab. In the Paragraph button section, click the Paragraph dialog box button. The Paragraph dialog box will open. Under Spacing, make sure that the Don't Add Space Between Paragraphs of the Same Style box contains a check mark. While you are there, make sure the before and after boxes are both set to zero point, and that the line spacing box is set to double. Click OK to close. If they weren't already, your citation paragraphs should now be properly spaced. Step 7. Check your header. Your page number and last name in the header of your essay is to continue on your Works Cited page. Since you have created your Works Cited page as an additional page of your essay, your header should already be automatically continuing, but you can double check by simply scrolling to the top of your Works Cited page and taking a look. Step 8. Check for matching font. The font of your Works Cited page should be the same font you are using in the body of your essay. Check your font now. If the font is different, click and drag to select the title and citations of your Works Cited page. Open the Home tab. Under Font, adjust the font and the font size to match the text of your essay. And that's it! You are now ready to create your own Works Cited page according to MLA style. Before I go, here are some additional reminders to consider as you create your citations. Use a current handbook. 
Each source you use has its own unique way of being cited on the Works Cited page, and MLA is very specific about formatting these citations. Therefore, it is very important that you study carefully the MLA documentation section of a current handbook, such as the Pocket Wadsworth Handbook. You can also find current citation models at the Purdue Online Writing Lab, or OWL, as I mentioned before. The URL of the site is owl.english.purdue.edu forward slash owl. Whatever resource you use, be sure to scan through the many pages of models in order to find the ones right for your sources. The second reminder is that alphabetizing is enough. Avoid numbering or bullet pointing your citation paragraphs. The third reminder, mark your source titles correctly. Titles of short works, such as essays, poems, songs, television episodes, short stories, and newspaper articles require quotation marks. Titles of long works, such as books of any kind, newspapers, magazines, television shows, movies, music albums, and database names require italics. Fourth, let the lines break themselves. Complete one citation and then hit your enter return button to create the next. As you write your citations, let your lines stretch all the way across the page from left to right and let your word processor advance to new lines as needed. Avoid using the enter return button to break any lines except when starting a new citation paragraph. And lastly, double space. Every line on the works cited page, just like the body of your text, is double spaced. There is never any reason to single, triple, or quadruple space ever. Keep it simple. We have reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you have found this information useful. Thank you for following along. Enjoy your researching and writing.